The world is seeing a new wave of scientific and technological advances in recent years. Life sciences are at the, right at the forefront of this new wave. Major breakthroughs in fields such as gene therapy, bioengineering, stem cell culture, biochip technology, and transgenic plants and animals are being made. Advances in the life sciences present attractive economic opportunities given their potential to transform our daily lives. The multidisciplinary nature of the life sciences can nurture new industries in biomedicine, biotechnology, pharmaceuticals, instrument innovations, and others, hence generating the knowledge base and value-added bioeconomy. This is the key impetus for Singapore to develop the life sciences industry as another economic engine for our nation's development. Beyond economics, the knowledge gained and the advances made in the life sciences will also enable scientists, doctors and engineers to manipulate life in revolutionary ways. With the power to manipulate life, life sciences bring, brings with it attendant ethical, legal and social issues. Knowledge in the life sciences can be a double-edged sword. Using it in a responsible manner and guided by ethical con considerations moral reasoning and accountability it can be creative and save lives. However, abusing this same knowledge can be destructive. We must therefore have the necessary knowledge and tools to understand these developments so that we can make the right decisions that could affect our society and community. Advances in the life sciences also play an important role in managing emerging risks we face globally, such as new diseases and bioterrorism. More than ever before, nations are aware of the impact that the tiniest of microbes can have on human civilization and our way of life. An example that struck close to home for us here is the coronavirus that caused SARS. This virus almost crippled our economy and our society. A more recent example is the H5N1 virus that causes the avian flu which threatens many countries around the world. The close international collaboration in the fight against these diseases have resulted in rapid advancements in the research in these fields. In order to prepare our students for the future, the Ministry of Education has taken steps to enhance the learning of life sciences in schools since 2001. The general student population will have a basic understanding of life sciences so as to kindle their interest. Students who are keen to pursue a career in life sciences will be given opportunities to acquire in-depth knowledge and skills in this field. This holistic approach will give our students general exposure to the various disciplines in the basic and applied sciences. I am happy to note that the NLB and ICAS have taken this initiative to launch the Life Sciences Lecture Series in 2001 to educate the layman on popular and current themes in life sciences. The close partnership leverages on the strength of the alumni of the Imperial College London, renowned for its excellence in science, technology and medicine. It also writes on the mission of the NLB to expand the learning capacity of the nation so as to enhance national competitiveness. The theme of this life sciences series is Body Parts, the Science of Human Reconstruction. I understand that four public lectures and one workshop have already been conducted by eminent scientists and practitioners here. Topics presented included personalized medicine, prosthetic devices, stem cells, the applications for regeneration of body parts and related ethical issues, as well as assistive technologies to enable people with disabilities to overcome their limitations. This evening's panel discussion is on an interesting topic, the making of a six million dollar man. Many of us of my age cohort will remember watching this well-known popular television series. Yet, if you have not watched it, you are too young. <laughs> the show's premise is intriguing, especially in the light of recent advances made in the life sciences. Do we really have the capability to build a bionic man? I'm sure the audience can look forward to an interesting and enlightening session with the panelists. On this note, I would like to congratulate the ICAS and NLB for successfully organizing the second series of the Life Sciences Lectures. I wish all of you 
the best as you work on future partnerships. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gan. Uh, on behalf of uh, ICAS and NLP, may I invite this again to present you a token of appreciation. And now I would like to uh, invite our distinguished panelists and panel moderator to take their seats. These uh, panelists are uh, from that side to this side, uh, Professor Edison Liu, Professor Lai Kin Man, uh, Professor Michael Rakhanov, Dr. Peng Lin, and our moderator, Professor Li Ying Hin. Let me just quickly introduce them. I think many of us have already seen uh, Professor Edison Liu on TV painting the artistic lions. Uh, tonight we see him in person. Uh, Professor Liu is the executive director of the Genome Institute of Singapore, which is a flagship, our flagship program uh, in our initiatives in biomedical sciences. And prior to his present appointment, he was director of the clinical sciences division at the US National Science Institute. Uh, Professor Lai, our second panelist tonight, is Deputy Executive Director of the Institute for Infocom Research, which spearheads Singapore's R&D effort in information and communication technologies. Uh, I'm also very happy to receive a postcard this morning from the Ambassador of France, uh, telling me that Professor Lai will be decorated to the rank of Officers of the Order of the Academic Palms uh, by the French government tomorrow. Uh, the Order of the Palms The Order of the Palms was uh, established by Napoleon in 1807 and is presented to people who has uh, rendered services that is very significant to education or to the enrichment of cultural integrators of France. Congratulations, Dr. Uh, our third panelist is uh, Professor Michael, Michael Rappenel. He's the chair of the Graduate Bioengineering Program in NUS. He's an internationally distinguished uh, scientist uh, in matrix biology and skin biology. He has received uh, quite a few awards for his accomplishments. And uh, our last panelist is uh, Professor, uh, Dr. Bing Lim, who is a senior group leader in the Genome Institute of Singapore. Dr. Lim's uh, team is at the forefront of innovative research that integrates advanced genomics technology with fundamental question impacting on application of stem cells in regenerative medicine. And uh, our panel moderator, Professor Lee Hing, is head of pediatric orthopedics at NUS and the leader of the NUS tissue engineering program. He's a pioneer in the use of myxenchymal uh, stem cells and he has uh, won quite a few international prizes for his contribution to tissue engineering. Um, now, the logistic part. To make our panel a bit more interactive, Instead of having all of them speaking and then ask questions at the end, we divided the panel into two parts. So part one, the Professor Liu and Professor Lai would uh, present their vision on the $60 million man, state their, uh, you know, uh, make the statement on the possibilities, challenges, and so on. Then we'll open for free form discussion. Then hopefully at about 8 o'clock, we will start part two, uh, where the Professor Rakunov and Dr. Liu present their perspective. And then we have another discussion, and finally the panel will be uh, closed with summarizing statement uh, from Professor Lee. Uh, so let, let's now begin the, the first part. Uh, 